What up MVP crew and welcome back to another week of all the drama and all the craziness that's going on in social media. I'm not going to hold y'all long so we're going to go ahead and hop into the video. If y'all aren't a part of the MVP crew yet make sure that you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. While you're doing that go ahead and turn your notification bell on and go ahead and give the video a big thumbs up right now. All right y'all so it's a few things that I want to talk about this week but the first thing on the agenda that I want to talk about is the Real Housewives of Atlanta. This stuff has been going crazy nini i don't know what kind of drugs you're on sis what you've been drinking um are you dick deprived or what but girl you are acting a complete and utter fool and making yourself look the most we have a saying down here you're doing a lot for a little bit as you guys already know nini unfollowed all of the girls from from the cast except for Shamari, which I don't even think that Shamari is coming back next season. So it's like, she's no threat to you. So you want to keep her. Anywho, right now it's really like her and Portia that's going at it. Or at least it's her and Portia that I'm worried about. Like her and Cynthia, I guess, had like some type of blowout. And, um, you know, Cynthia told her, bitch, if you don't want to be friends, you know what I'm saying, over this. If you want to fall out over this, then fuck you pretty much. And I agree with her. Like, you know... Um, first, Cynthia has a man now, so you can't be playing them games, them same games that you were trying to play with Cynthia before. You can't do that, because Cynthia don't give a damn about what you are and what you're going through at this point. Cynthia got a man, and that's all Cynthia care about, is this man. You know what I'm saying? So you can't be playing games with Cynthia like that. Two, Cynthia is 50 goddamn years old. Y'all act like y'all are 23, like y'all don't have time to be playing them games. But anywho, let's get to the part with Nene and Portia because that's the part that I'm that I really want to talk about. If you guys watched the Real Housewives of Atlanta, then you guys remember the bi wig party. And after the bi wig party, allegedly Nene had pulled Portia's belt off and she put her hands on Portia or whatever. Nene saying that she didn't put her hands on Portia. Portia saying, girl, you ain't gotta lie, Craig, you ain't gotta lie. And we're just at a point now where we don't know what the truth is. So it's been some text messages between Portia and Nene that's been going around. So I guess Nene has sent this text message to Portia. You lying ass, fat, hungry bitch. You, <laughs> you know I never put my hands on you. Marlo, Cynthia, nor Candy can ever say that. You want an excuse for going to my closet without my permission. So you talk your fake shit on IG all you want. But remember, my house is lit with cameras. Oh, and don't forget who was by your side and saved your whack ass when you pulled Kenya off that sofa. Don't forget nobody fucked with you in San Fran or in Spain but me. And if you got something to say, say the truth. Because if I put my hands on you, you will know. First of all, Nene, you're not that girl. So let's stop acting like you just that girl that everybody's supposed to be afraid of. You're not that bitch, Nene. So sit down in the corner somewhere and shut it up, okay? But I digress. So Portia said that Nene sent her that six days after giving birth. All right, y'all. So then after that, Nene put out a message pretty much trying to let the people know, like, no, this isn't like the first message that I sent her before or after she had her baby. I sent her a message before that. The message is... Today, your life changed. Congratulations. No matter where we are in our relationship, being a mother is a true blessing and only women can bring life into this world. That day in Destin, Florida, when you said you might be pregnant, I was genuinely happy for you. Pretty much she was saying, no, I was supportive over you because I get it. Um, now, don't get me wrong. I'm team Portia in this instant, but Portia, you know what I'm saying? Like, you should have released this message too. Like, don't make it seem like she just came for you out of nowhere. She wasn't supportive of the baby and all this and all that. Like, you know what I'm saying? She sent you your little, con your little congratulations text. So, I mean, she definitely was supportive of you. So, I get why Nene would have leaked that part of it just because, girl, don't do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't make it seem like I just came at you wrong and never once congratulated you about your baby, which I did. And they started getting back and forth into it and they were releasing more more screenshots of the text messages. I'll put those right here. I'm not going to read all of those. Um, but I just think that it's very petty. And I think that, Nene, you contradict yourself all the time. Like, you're supposed to be this elegant, classy lady and you're telling the other girls, you know what I'm saying, or at least you told Portia one time, don't get caught on camera doing this, doing that. But yet you doing the same thing. Like, girl, you just... Only reason why yours wasn't on camera, and I feel like I could be wrong, but I think you're still an executive producer of the show. So if you're still an executive producer of the show, you don't have that much power, but you have a little bit of say-so. And I'm pretty sure you really tried to pull some strings to get that taken off, because why would they not show? If it didn't get physical and nothing happened, why would they not show that part of it 
on TV. You know what I'm saying? So that's just why I'm a little confused with that, but that's, just, I don't know, that's just me. Nene's trying to say that what Portia said at the end of it, like, I'm so scared, take this mic off of me, that that was all edited in after it was shot. So she did that in the studio later, um, and that never happened in real life. I'm confused because if that never happened, then did the thing when Marlo was like, she's pregnant, did that ever happen? Because, I mean, that was in there, too, and that was in there when the, when the screens went black. So, I'm just a little confused, but Nene never said anything about what Marlo said. So, that's why I'm just confused about, like, did none of it ever happen, or did just Portia's part never happen? And if Portia's part was the only one that didn't happen, then why did Marlo say she's pregnant if you never went after Portia? Let me know what y'all think about the Real Housewives of Atlanta. I feel like they're bringing it to us this season, and they are giving us some drama. And, I mean, hey, who do y'all want to see back next season? And who do y'all not want to see back next season? I want to see Portia. I want to see Nene, even though I'm not really liking her right now. But I want to see her just to see where all this goes. I want to see Kenya. Um, I can do with or without Candy, honestly. I want to see Shamari, which I heard she's not coming back. But I really hope that Shamari comes back. Just because I feel like Shamari is so good for the show. Like, she brings like a light to the show that we needed and the happiness to the show that I that we needed. Cynthia, I can really do with or without Cynthia, but I think her storyline might be a little bit more interesting just because her and Nene are beefing. So go ahead and bring her back too. Um, Eva, I don't know. I'm still a little iffy iffy with Eva. I don't know if I want her back or not. But y'all let me know who y'all want back um, on the cast for next year and what y'all think about all this drama that's going on. Next on the agenda, we have Wendy Williams. Wendy, Wendy, Wendy. I am so disappointed in you and what you're doing. Last week, I said that I wasn't going to drag you just because, you know what I'm saying, you're already going through some hard stuff. You're a black queen. I don't want to be dragging no black queen. But Wendy, what are you doing with yourself? You are letting this man ruin your life. And the man ain't even that cute. If you're going to let a man ruin your life, he needs to be fine as fuck with a good credit score and some good dick. He don't look like he got 9-3. Well, he looked like he got some good dick. I ain't going to lie. He looked like he be piping your ass down. But still, don't, don't, don't mess up your coin, your show. They talking about replacing you. Like, it's not just, you know what I'm saying? Oh, people behind the scenes just talking shit about, you know, like the networks are talking about get, finding you a replacement. To the point where Nick Cannon had to go on social media and say nobody can replace Wendy, da 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 Because everybody was saying Nick Cannon needs to go ahead and step in. It's being reported that allegedly she had to go to the hospital a few days ago because um, she, she was really, really drunk. She checked herself out of sober living. She went and bought a few bottles. And she got drunk. Um, and this all happened around the same time that the Sharika, Sharina, Shariri girl was given birth to Kelvin, Calvin, Kareem, whatever his name is, baby, her husband. Um, and y'all know Sharika, Sharima, Sharini. She is the, what am I trying to say, y'all? She the side piece of Kelvin, Kareem, Kalu, whatever Wendy Williams' husband name is. I don't know them. They're not celebrities. It's not my job to know their names, too. I just report the news. I don't make it. So, anywho, I just feel like, girl... Put the bottle down, get yourself together, and do what you have to do for you and your little son. You need to leave this man alone because he's not doing nothing but ruining your career and dragging you down the gutter. And I honestly don't see how you don't get that. I mean, we're all out there seeing it, and I guess hindsight is 2020 when you're in a situation. You know what I'm saying? You can't really see it the way that we see it, and maybe that might be the problem. But girl, I'm letting you know from the outside looking in, it's not looking good for you, boo, and you need to run as fast as you possibly can. Next on the agenda, we have Jordan Woods and the Kardashians and Jada Pickett Smith and all this and all that. So it's being reported, I don't know, because I don't even know who goes and looks at all this stuff and realizes who follows who and who does this and who does that. Who has time for that? I don't go and do it, but the Shade Room is reporting that Jada Pickett Smith has unfollowed Kim Kardashian and... Chloe and Courtney and Chris Jenner and all the all the whole clan. Um, I guess over this whole Jordan Wood stuff and all of that. Social media is saying that that was the right thing for her to do. Um, you know, stick with our black our black queen, all this and all that. And I get what people are trying to say, but at the same time, I don't like to condone people doing wrong. You know what I mean? So, girl, like you slept with this man. 
Well, you did whatever you did with this man. I don't know if you slept with him. I just, allegedly, you slept with him, but allegedly you just kissed him. Who knows what really happened? All I know is, your ass would have been beat up if you would have fucked with my man like that. And I get it. My grandma used to always tell me, how you get a man is how you gonna lose him. So if you got a man on some rocky shit, you gonna lose him on some rocky shit. Chloe, you got that man when he was already in a relationship, so you lost him while you was in a relationship with him. I get it, but two wrongs don't make it right at the same time. And I'm not, like, Chloe already did what she did, so I'm not condoning nor downing what she did. But what I'm saying is, I can't stick by Jordan for doing it. Like, I just, I, I, I can't. And I don't see how people can support her and be like, yeah, go, go girl, go girl, tear the Kardashians down. Like, at the end of the day, yeah, the Kardashians are a little annoying, but they're humans just like everybody else. Like, y'all need to get off their dick so much. And that's really all I have to say about the Jordan Woods thing. Um, and I I don't know. They're all 50-something years old. We're at least Kris Jenner and Jada Pickett Smith is at least 50. Like, y'all following each other stuff off of social media and stuff. Like, that's stuff that high school kids do. Y'all need to grow up. Next thing on the agenda that we have is the Jesse Smollett situation. All charges against Jesse have been dropped. I personally think that he paid somebody off, but that's neither here nor there. I'm entitled to my opinion, and that's all it is. It's my opinion. I'm not saying that anybody else is wrong. I'm not saying anybody else is right. But what I'm saying is when you have 16, 17 felony counts against you, and every single one of them were dropped, and now the FBI and everybody is trying to figure out why they were dropped, that's because you dropped a few bills to get out of trouble. Now, hey, if you, if you can afford to do that, by all means, do what you're going to do, sis. Because if I was in a situation where if I was in a situation, I wouldn't have did it. Let's be clear. I wouldn't act like somebody beat me up. But I'm not going to say act because I don't know. Allegedly, he got beat up. I don't know personally if he got beat up or not. I couldn't imagine me nor anybody else faking getting beat up and actually letting somebody beat us up, going to the hospital, doing all that just for a publicity stunt or whatever it was for because I still don't realize what he would have gained by doing it but um the girls are saying that he lied about it and he's paying somebody off and that's how he's getting out of trouble now let's just all pray for Jesse or don't pray for him but I don't know how y'all feel about it but the FBI have got involved and they're trying to figure out why the charges were dropped so let's just hope that the FBI don't find nothing that's gonna put that boy under and Y'all just pray for the boy because there's something really sick in the head going on about him. Y'all just pray for him. Next on the agenda and last on the agenda, we have this whole Cardi B situation. And Cardi B saying that she was robbing and drugging the girls back in the day. Um, and I'm a little torn on this situation. A part of me, everybody knows I love Cardi B with everything in me. But at the same time, I like to stand up for what's right. And what she did was not right. And that's where the battle is in my head. Let me let y'all know why I say I get part of it. I have a best friend. And when we were like 20, 21, she used to strip. And she, she was, she was like a Cardi B, I guess you could say. She was a stripper. She, stri she, well, she was a stripper. She was ratchet. She, she, she did what she had to do to survive. And... I seen her and I interacted with her every single day of my life growing up. You know what I mean? So I've seen her do similar things that I've seen Cardi B do. I've seen her, you know, maybe not drug somebody per se, but they're like super fucked up off of whatever they, them two were doing together. And then she robbed him blind and left the hotel room never to be seen again. She's called me and told me stories about that. I've had niggas call my phone or meet up with me and try to figure out where she's at. So that's all I'm saying is like, I, I can get why. I'm not even going to say I can get why because y'all are going to take that and y'all are going to run with that. I can't get why somebody can do it, but I've been around a situation where it was done before. So I get that it's not something that people are not out there doing. She said that she was drugging them and she was robbing them. Now that leaves questions in my head. So if you were out there drugging them, was it y'all were doing drugs together and you were just maybe giving them a little bit more than what you were taking? Or is it, um, you know what I'm saying? You weren't doing any drugs at all and you was just like, how were you drugging them? Were you putting it in their drink? Like sis, that's the kind of stuff that we need to know before I'm like, I, I just need to know these things. 
Y'all, I don't know. I'm so conflicted and so confused because so many people are saying like, you know, this is the same thing that R. Kelly did. Like, first of all, y'all ain't finna try to compare her to R. Kelly. It's not what y'all finna do. Okay, she's not out here raping the kids. She's out here drugging them. It's the difference. But no, I definitely think that she was wrong and she has to take accountability for it. Um, and we can't really use the excuse that it happened a long time ago just because Bill Cosby stuff happened a long time ago. R. Kelly stuff happened a long time ago. Cardi, 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 you're supposed to have a team on your side that's able to make sure that these kind of things do not get out and that these kind of things were wiped off of social media as soon as you made it big. I don't understand, now this is what I don't get. I don't understand why people even put that kind of stuff on social media anyway if you already know that your dream is to be big in life. If, like, help me understand that. If you already know you here and your goal is to get here and your social media is gonna grow there with you, why would you put all of that stuff out there on your social media? You should have hired somebody to comb through your whole social media and already, just like these fans and these these trolls out here can pull up that video, your PR team should have been pulled up that video years ago and got that deleted, period. So I don't think there's any excuse to, you know what I'm saying, why that wasn't deleted. And I feel like at this point, Cardi, I love you to death, but you're gonna have to suffer the consequences that come with not being smart and you just weren't smart in that situation. I mean, what do you guys think? Do you guys think that she was wrong? Like, how do you guys feel about this whole Cardi situation? I mean, on one hand, I can't lie. I do, like, it kind of goes with the Bill Cosby's and the R. Kelly's. And I hate to say that because y'all know I love me some Cardi. But on the other hand, I love me some Cardi. <laughs> like, I'm stuck. I love me some Cardi. But I'm also a human that, that stands up for what's right and I have a moral compass. And that's what's kind of keeping me from riding for her with this whole situation like this is a situation you're gonna have to ride by yourself boo because i just i don't know y'all tell me what y'all think do y'all think that she should be held responsible do y'all think that just let her pass do y'all think it's being blown up out of proportion do y'all think that the bitch should get the bill cosby treatment let me know what y'all think down in the comments down below that's all i had on my agenda for today so we're about to go ahead and get out of here. I hope that you guys like this video. They're going to be getting better and better every week. This is only my second week of doing this type of video. So, y'all, I'm telling y'all, I got more and more ideas. They're going to get better and better every week. I just got to, you know, I'm working on it. So, y'all continue to support your boy. All right, y'all? Go ahead and give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. If you didn't enjoy the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up anyway. Just because you're already here, you might as well. All right? Like I always say, I fuck with y'all the way that y'all fuck with me, so continue to fuck with your boy, and we will continue to fuck with each other. It's your boy, Rajay, and I'm out. Peace.